long-term exposure to loud noise can slowly destroy your hearing at any age without you noticing. This is called noise-induced hearing loss. Noise-induced hearing loss can also occur after you've heard a sudden loud sound like an explosion, a jet engine at about 100 feet away, or close-range gunshots. Eventually, unprotected exposure to noise can damage the tiny hair cells in the inner ear. In an effort to prevent avoidable hearing loss, companies coordinate hearing conservation programs for employees. You are responsible for protecting your hearing when you're not at work, and you should always take the necessary actions to avoid unprotected noise exposure at work. Landscaping equipment, straight pipe exhaust, packed out stadiums, studio recording, even band rehearsal and increased volume when using earbuds or headphones all commonly reach these harmful levels. Here's an important note. Trying to block out unpleasant noise with loud music may seem like a good idea. But it's not. Assessments of workplace noise levels are documented in noise surveys. Hearing conservation programs, including audiometric testing and education and training, are required in workplaces where the noise survey results show eight-hour sound level recordings, averaging 85 decibels or above, and that's a time-weighted average. This video is part of the company-required training in a hearing conservation program to remind you each year of the dangers of noise exposure and the use of hearing protection whenever you are exposed to loud sounds at work, home, and during loud hobbies. The hearing conservation program information is documented and available to you. Now, you have an important choice to make. You can either protect your hearing or not, but keep in mind, if you do not protect your hearing at work as required, you may not be in compliance with your company's mandatory procedures. You might want to take that seriously. Follow the rules. Life isn't all about work. Your quality of life at home is most important, so please don't risk any aspect of your work safety because the possible loss that comes with it will affect your home life. Here's how sound travels through the ear. It starts from the outer ear and makes a journey through the ear canal. When it reaches the middle ear, it vibrates the eardrum. The sound is then amplified by the auditory ossicles, which are very small bones. These tiny bones are the malleus, incus, and stapes, also known as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. The transmitted vibrations then travel to the inner ear, which is filled with fluid and contains the cochlea and the hair cells that need to be present in order to finally send the vibration to the brain to be interpreted as the sounds we hear. The hair cells in the cochlea need to remain alive and healthy, so they have to be protected from loud noises. Otherwise, you can lose your hearing and may eventually need hearing aids. As mentioned earlier, long-term unprotected exposure to high sound levels can cause noise-induced hearing loss. Now, let's talk about how to prevent hearing loss by protecting your hearing because it's worth protecting, even if you act like you don't think so. Hearing protection is required in areas where the noise level registers an eight-hour average of 90 decibels or above. Earplugs and earmuffs reduce the levels of noise your ears encounter. The noise reduction ratings on your hearing protector need to be appropriate for your specific workplace noise levels. These are not approved forms of hearing protection. The most prevalent types of hearing protectors are earplugs, which can be foam, reusable, or banded, and earmuffs. There are also custom-molded hearing protectors, electronic, amplified, and even smart technology types. Let's go over basic proper hearing protector fitting. Wearing earplugs or earmuffs and getting accustomed to hearing suppressed voices due to wearing hearing protectors can be quite challenging. Taking the time to make sure they are clean and worn properly can also be very frustrating. Earmuffs should fit nice and snug, covering both ears with a complete seal. The band should fit tightly across the crown of your head. Inspect the cushions for signs of wear and tear and replace as needed. The ear pad cushions should be cleaned often with mild soap and warm water. Earplugs are a little different. It is important that your hands are clean before inserting earplugs, whether they are disposable, custom molded, or reusable. And all reusable plugs need to be cleaned often. To insert them properly, take one earplug in one hand. With the other hand, reach over your head so that you can carefully pull up and outward on the top of the ear to maneuver it and open up the ear canal. Roll the earplug to make it smaller, then slightly turn it while gently pushing it into your ear. Hold your finger on the earplug until it seats and expands in the ear. Once released, there should only be a small part of the earplug showing. When viewed from the side, do the same for the 
every other ear. Dirt can be wiped from the foam plugs and pushed to fit style earplugs with a clean cloth. Reusable earplugs and banded earplugs do not need to be rolled, but are inserted with the same process as the foam plugs. Move them up and down while gently pushing into the ear. They should be cleaned with mild soap and warm water. Some noise levels are so loud that wearing both earplugs and earmuffs together is a requirement. The worst part about permanent hearing loss is hearing does not improve or return after the loss. Once your hearing is gone, it's gone. Your annual hearing tests are recorded in order to discover if you have suffered significant hearing loss in one or both ears. If there is no significant change from your baseline test, that is an acceptable result. There is no pass or fail in occupational audiometric testing. You should protect your hearing whenever you are in a noisy environment, not just at work. You never know when someone else's safety may depend on your hearing.